Jehova Malak, olam olamad. Jehova Malak, jami, rakis. Jehova Gadol, makarien tios. Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios tios penta kreta, kurios tios pistos. El de et Jehova, el emuna Jehova. Ibas lian kurios, otios, o penta kreta. Basilios, basilion, kai kurios, kurion. Jehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shala. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself up to unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding that as Job said in 23 of Job, more than my necessary food, I have taken lot of value to the word of God, as even Jeremiah fifteen sixteen also teaches. When thy word were found, O Lord, I ate it. The principal thing what we learn in this life, as food is necessary for our flesh, much more than that food is the word of God, which we need to heed, which we need to obey, which we need to guard, which we need to protect. And if we don't do it, the reason for his judgment, he says, When I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not turn unto me to do my will. Twice in Isaiah 65 and Isaiah 66, he gives this great caution of warning for us to know and to learn the differentiation between the people who tremble at his word and the people who do not tremble at his word. So in order to understand these things, we shall have the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins to rebound. And let's come back and learn what Lord God the Father in heaven has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message which are preserved and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. The qualities on which Lord God the Father would love to regard. The Hebrew word in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2 talks about having great pleasure, having great favor, and having great care. The Hebrew word is nabat. So he's asking a question in Isaiah 66, 1, where you can build a house for me, or a house which has to be called shaken a glory of the Lord. Where is the resting place? And that word is very important, what we read. It is not yashab, to relaxly dwell, or loon, to lodge there. But the Hebrew word, what has been used over here, is very important. 
which goes to prove for us the word meant to say a place of manuka or complete quietness peaceable or having the standards of matrimony standards of great peace you know much of the people think getting married and having married they know the problems of life but that's not right the thing what it has to be god the father designed a right man to the right woman as he says in malachi 2:14 which he said for us the remaining breath of a man which has been breathed into his nostrils and the breath which is left over with that breath he is going to breathe into his woman and that's the right woman and the reason why they have to be in the standards of wife and husband is that they should have godly children so the left over breath what you have breathed into your woman she will be a right helpmate for you so here the rest place is menuka and it is a response of a feminine gender which says for us to have that great peace to have that great relaxation and above all to have in a state of great rest so that's what it says where is the resting place the church being called to be the wife of my lord in the future for his third title king of kings and lord of lords can he have this great matrimonial relationship if you are married on this earth you know what is that relationship you have with your wife and several times in the passages particularly in the same book of proverbs he said whosoever findeth a good wife is a favor from the lord and at the same time he says a wife who is constantly fighting with you quarreling with you it is better for you to stay in a wilderness than to be with that woman so he writes the two ends of the contrast in the same book of proverbs one end he says it's a favor it's a gift of the lord at the other end he writes she is as good as being a hell on wheels so why does he write these things because he knows very well if you don't align with the word of god in christ as you have to be the wife of the lord and perform the deeds of my christ if you don't do it what the intention of god the father is or what he really wants us to do then quite obviously you will play you will be facing the other half the other of what much of the people are facing today are nothing but the judgments of the lord and they are in search of frantic solutions called to be futile which is in the standards of absolutely vain so what is the only solution the solution is to hear the word of god the solution is to look upon to graduate in the mind of christ the solution is what the word of lord god demands you to grow up as grammatius and the word of lord god says to you to tremble at his word the word tremble which we need to look again because much of the people don't understand what is the meaning of tremble over here in the english but the hebrew is quite clear and quite specific called to be kareth and those who tremble at the word of lord god from the same chapter of verse number 5 in isaiah 66 he teaches till to the point of verse number 15 what benefits they have and coming to the conclusion in verse number 20 he says those who haven't kareth his word they will be like the great word what he calls in the english a boring but the hebrew doesn't say a boring it says they will be a great contempt or the standards called to be aversion that is not in accord with the true word or to the true meaning of abhorrence that means you will be absolutely making yourselves why at least i came in this flesh you would have been like an animal rather than inculcating your life in the standards of this flesh because it's a great and unique calling becoming in the flesh and most of the people in many religions they want to reach the state called as nirvana perfection but in this flesh after believing in christ you have been called to live a life of perfection the ano and the high calling of the lord god the zoe life which is quite opposite to the death so dear brethren you have something great in this flesh but he says those who don't tremble at his word which he said in isaiah 66:2 again in isaiah 66:5 the same word kareth the benefits of trembling in his word he says what you are going to get if you don't tremble at his word he says you will be like an abhorrent dorian this is not a greek word but it is the hebrew word the greek word dorian is a gift which we read in ephesians 3 but over it is derian or d e r a o n but there it is d o r e a n only the words the alphabets change because here it is d a r e o n but there it is dorian d o r e a n 
So here when we find this word it meant to say you will be like a great smelling or have yourself repulsion. Why at least I haven't served the Lord when I have given this enough grace? Why I haven't trembled at the word of the Lord God when I have given this enough grace? Why I haven't considered to look that I am holy as God the Father demanded me to be holy and he said this is your will, your sanctification in 1 Thessalonians 3. Why at least I haven't been the will of God, though he made me a new creation in the Lord as kinecatesis of a great quality, and he has endowed me with the clothes of endicae sune kai hose tiste salatia. You will, you will abhor yourself or you will have that repulsion in yourselves. Because you haven't done the will of God. You haven't trembled at his word. And yet God the Father calls you, where is the rusting place that are going to give for me? You know, much of the problems in life cannot be greater than the problems of a man who is married to a wrong woman. There will be a lifetime of no peace, no harmony, no understanding, no love, no care. Everything will be like in the movies, what you act, hypocritical. Lord God the Father has designed the right woman called to be the church to the Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being our right man. As a man cherisheth and nourisheth his flesh, when he writes in Colossians, so shall he shall lay down his life. He laid down his soul for us. He cherisheth and nourisheth us. Therefore, the way how he wants to feed his own flesh, so he's feeding the congregation of the church. But you're trying out to become a repulsion to the Lord. And tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, when you have been done with that, in Isaiah 66, 22 to 24, he talks about after the judgment, what happens? You look upon your own flesh and you are bored. And you may be thinking that those who are believing in Christ, they will be saved. Once saved, always saved. But for whom does it apply? It applies to those people who die in the Lord. It is not for them who are alive till to the world. As the seed we read when he teaches in John chapter 12 as well, until and unless it doesn't die, it doesn't produce a new one. Once saved, always saved are those people who have now completely transformed, who have been completely in the standards of metamorphomai not meta schematizoans and we explained that word for you again and again to explain it meta schematizoa is like a dutch garden made into an ireland garden or irish garden metamorphomai a garden which has been completely transformed to become a battleground and here we want to completely change the essence which is not possible by satan it can only appear to you something outward and much of the Christendom is lying today in such outward hypocritical way of life which did not tremble at the word of God. If they would really tremble, carad, or have that earthquake kind of a cracking fever, shivering fever in them to the Lord, every believer would have been carrying their cross every day, following my Christ and become the disciple of the word of God. Every pastor teacher would be now to daily teach the word of God, not even to let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. And a woman would learn in silence not to have authority over the men. And church being the head, that is the body, and Christ our Lord of God being the head of the church, the teachings of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he said several times in John 1.18 as well, no man has seen God at any time, but the Son who comes from the bosom of God the Father will expound the scriptures. And the word over there, what is going to explain or expound is called to be exegeomai. And every believer would come to look face to face upon the Lord when he comes back to study the word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Therefore we find there is not a man who arose like Moses when he writes in Deuteronomy 34.10. It's a great caution of warning for us to realize. If you don't come back to the original language of the scriptures, you are not standing with Lord God face to face and you can never be counted into such category of the people who do great signs and wonders for Lord God's word on this earth to leave behind a great legendary impact in this great and intensified stage of this angelic conflict which is unseen constantly running around. 
So once saved, always saved are those believers who have been completely transformed, completely renovating the standards of thinking. And much of the Christendom preaching today teaches you to become morally high or to become, to increase your moral standards. But that's not Christianity. You have come unto Christ to realize he walks in truth. He is a Lord God whose habitation is of truth, whose throne is of holiness. And we are dealing with such kind of a great Lord of a God who always loves to be in the standards of righteousness and in truth. That's what we read in the word, Kassad the Nemeth, in one of the book of Psalms. His habitation is holiness. He resides upon the throne of holiness. And he has called us to be holy as he is holy and you are not able to tremble at that word when he says, you have to be holy as God the Father in heaven is holy. You are just considering the things to be simple and easy. And tomorrow you think you will be qualified. If the pastor teacher fails to make you all to grow up into grammatia as an indeterminate sign for you to the great commission of making disciples of all the nations, then you are not trembling at his word. If the believer doesn't carry his cross and come to Christ every day to renovate the standards of his thinking so that he can produce the, ju the, the fruit to, bought the, to get the juice in that wine fat and so that he can build the tower and have the word of God to enjoy in you, then you're really not doing the will of God. You're not trembling at his word. And people are interested to raise your moral standards, but they're not making you unto wise to be unto salvation, which is your calling in the Lord. Therefore, when we come back to the man of God, particularly in the standards of Moses' life, you know, there are a lot many lessons which we need to learn when it has been compared to be the man of God. Because he feared the word of Lord. So he says, God is not like a man. And then furthermore, he goes to teach for us that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That is, that which is establishing forever. The word good is not to, but kum over here. And furthermore, we read, and the things that First Samuel 15, 29 says, The strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Who about whom he's talking? He's talking about the people whom God the Father calls, that they are the men who will be in the word of God. And again, in Titus 1, 2, he says, in in hope of eternal life, which God ca that cannot lie promised before the world begin. And why does he say so? Because he wants them to shine like the sun which goeth forth in full of his might. So when God cannot lie, when God cannot change, when God is not a man to alter his words, he wants us to look and understand in such character of life wherewith all scripture which has been given for us, we should be in the standards of doing the will of God. Therefore, the example for us now in Deuteronomy chapter 33, as called, Deuteronomy chapter 33, as we read in the following verse of verse number 2. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto him. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand, went a fiery law for him. And the reason why he says that is, this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel. What is Moses? The man of God. And the word over here, Ish Elohim. Why the word Ish? It is not Adama. Adama refers to the entire human race or not regenerate. But over here, Ish is the one who is born again in the Lord and is going after the manner of image of God to conform in him. This man, he says that out of ten thousands of his saints from his right hand goes a fiery law for them. That is what the word of Lord God, which is always like a fire. And why does he say so? Because he knows very well the man of God, what he has made. In, even you look in Psalms 103 verses 20 and 21, his ministers are like the angel spirits. And what they do, they always do the good pleasure of God the Father. So here, exemplifying about Moses, he calls him man of God. Again, in First Chronicles twenty-three fourteen, he writes, Moses, the man of God. 
Again, Ish Elohim. Coming back to the scripture to whom this word of God has come in John 10, 35, followed by the standards of 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture, that is, what we have in graphe, is given by Theonistas of God, which is profitable, again, we know the four departments, for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for training in righteousness. Again, he calls that the man of God. Over here, the word man is Anthropos. And the word Anthropos is been referring now in the church age for every truly born again individual believer. Therefore, in Galatians 3.27, we have no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female, all are one in Christ because they have this unique spiritual life to live. Not that women can have authority over the men. Scripture cannot contradict itself, but it meant to have given equal privilege and equal opportunity to achieve the goal of God, what is intended for us to perform. So he writes over here, saying that in reference to the male or female and furthermore he goes to take this word being like a man faced the countenance and where does it come from having to be with male or female followed by the word called to be aptonomai and do you know what is this word aptonomai the word which is called to be man of God which goes further from the standards of having to appear or to look or to behold and how do you behold you have to behold to the world that you are man of God irrespective of your sex I'm either male or female does the world look at you that you are a man of God how does the world recognize that you are man of God therefore he says in first Peter 4 if you open up your mouth let it be like divine oracles every time you talk Colossians 4 6 make it to be seasoned with salt Therefore, he claims in preaching the word of 2 Timothy 4.2, Kerusoton Lagan, he says what we need to preach. He gives the same verse in Colossians 4.2-4, mystery doctrine of the church age, which you need to communicate so that every believer should be aware to open up his mouth that is representing God. How could you represent God? How you could represent the polytheism of privileges of the heavenly life? If you come from heaven, you will realize that you are showing for the heavenly life, but you are not coming from heaven. But what you do, being born again in Christ, you are transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear beloved son as heavenly citizens. And now being renovating the standards of your thinking from this earthly way of life into the heavenly standards. You have renovated the standards of your thinking. That's the heavenly way of life. You renovate, you renovate, you renovate. Therefore, in Acts chapter 10 and 11, we look when God the Father gives in three times, which has been sanctified and kept apart. He says, Arise, kill, and take it and eat. And the mannerism of the things, what do we find? We find some reptiles, we find some snakes, we find some flyer of the heavens which are unclean. We also find some wild beasts. And these things represent in the standards of uncleanliness in every way. And why does the word of Lord God teach us in such way? Because we, the unbelieving section called to be ta Athene, the Gentiles, the all nations apart from the Israelites, we are the men who do not have the word of God. The divine oracles were being first delivered to the people of Israelites, but they rejected. But now he said, all are one in church, no racism. So we find a lesson for us to learn over here. What is our nature? We are either like reptiles, we are either like chameleons, we are either like the snakes. Having our attitude animal. You know, they don't reason, they don't think. Animals don't know what is the purpose of their life. A pig cannot rise up its head and look what is happening in the heaven. An ant doesn't even have a king, but they have the standards of maintaining their life, though it is for a short time. When it is going to die, they do not know. A butterfly which lives for 47 days. Likewise, we know the life of these animals. Particularly, you can go back and look in the National Geographical Channel where every animal and its species and its life, its length and what are the characteristics of it, you have been known. Even God the Father would compare to renew our strength like eagle and lion to be like an attitude. But these are like animals. But the real power of El, which is ending up like the word Ezekiel or Daniel or Israel, it is what God will direct in his will, in his strength. Man, though he tries to perform in all the ways, he fails. But comparing to the animals, he wants to prove these are the greatest, these are the big one, these are the great one, and he distinguished between which are clean and unclean in the Old Testament so that they could understand them very clearly. But coming to the church age, when he compared them to us, he's teaching our nature what it is before believing in Christ. 
Some may have the nature of a snake, indeed though gossiping, maligning, judging. Some have the attitude of taking revenge, vindictiveness. Some of the people will have always worry, mental attitude, sins, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. Some of the people will have characters like pig, like dog, even several times being compared in the Bible. Dog goes back its own vomit. Pig will go for its own valos. Therefore, he says, do not throw these pearls, margaritas, the Greek word, before these pigs and before these pigs and dogs, they do not know the value of it. Even in Colossians, in Philippians 3, 2, he says, writing this thing same again for you is not a burdensome to me, but for your care I'm writing so that you shall not fall into the hands of these dogs. Even in Isaiah 65, we read, these are the men who do not bark. In 63, it has to be, or 64. These are dumb dogs, lazy dogs, slumber dogs. Where does he compare man to woman, even the uh, two animals, not woman, but two animals? Even the same standards of Balaam, when he came to seduce the people, even the dumb donkey talking to him. Even these animals, at least they are obedient. He says in Isaiah and Joel, they know their master, but you do not know me. Even the cock, when it could crew three times, it taught a lesson to remind Peter that he deceived the Lord. The very silent look of my Jesus, my Christ, might have made him to weep bitterly. And he was been waiting for one chance to get to get back to the Lord. And he says, Satan wanted you to shave you off. But I prayed for you when you return, come back and strengthen your brethren. Because upon you I will build the church or the keys given to your hands. The same thing he entered through the Gentiles. And what did the Gentiles do? What is their nature? Their nature is like the reptiles. Their nature is like the snakes. Their nature is like this wild beast. Their nature is like these unclean animals, the flyer of the heavens. And what they all have to come now, they all have to form to come to the image of Christ. That's why you have been given this time after salvation. God the Father would have taken you long back when you believe in the Lord. He knows the world lieth in wickedness. But he wants you to be a witness in this world which lieth in wickedness. Therefore he said, I have born to witness for the truth. John 18, 37, 38. And he is the perfect witness, he writes in Revolution 1. Why? Because he lived a life having no sin, being not born in the sin. And the way how he led the life being born in the Holy Ghost, he says, now being born again in Christ, the sooner the better you try to live the life of Christ by getting yourself conformed to the image of Christ. And this nature of these Gentiles, what they were, even Lord our God comparing the people of Israelites to the ox and ass and indictment in Isaiah chapter 1, he wants to turn and to teach them a great lesson. You are also no good, no far better than the Gentiles, though I have given you the divine oracles. Though he concludes in Deuteronomy 33, verse 29, Happy are you, ashery as you have to be always walking with the uprightness of your heart towards the Lord God by obeying his word. Then you are really happy because your whole Lord of our God has redeemed you. You know how beautifully Moses concludes that entire book of Deuteronomy 33. He teaches something which is really great. And most of the people today in the present Christendom, they have just let it go. Why? Because they haven't understood what is it the word of Lord God teaches to us to be profitable unto Christ. And they go on to think God is like a man who is going to lie. And they're not able to walk in the standards of God where he wants us to shine in the glory of Lord God. So if you have your Bible, open it up to Deuteronomy chapter 33 in verse 30, in verse 29, when he says for us very clearly, happy, the word happy is called to be Asherias, the origin of the word to be called as for you, upright, uh, as the word for you to be blessed. But it says for you to walk straight, to walk upright, to make an advance in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Therefore, he says for us, especially to be happy, you have to walk upright, to be honest, to be prosper, or in order to be in the standards of great blessing of the Lord, or you have to be genuinely upright. So he says, happy are the people, happy are thou, O Israel, that time it was Israel, when he's writing to them that he gave the word of God, but now to the church, he gives you, blessed are they that they, that they wash this, that they wash their clothes with the commandments of the word of God. The clothes refers back to your life again. When we read that in Revolution, 
Blessed are they that do his commandments. So same thing over here. Happy are they, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people. Though, so that he meant to say now, the entire genealogical of these Gentile nations, when he said in Amos 3, apart from Israelites and not anyone on this earth, in the same way he's teaching, happy are you, you people of Israel, blessed are you, because you have been given such kind of a great law which hasn't been given to anyone. And what is that? The gift of revolution to make you know what is life. The entire summary of the passages from Genesis 1, 1 to 1, 3. Again, beginning with 3 through verse number 13, you find the entirety of your life. The greater light, the lesser light. The light what he saw fit and he gave to separate us from the waters. And he made the dry land and he made the dry land to produce the grass, the herb. And whenever he says darkness, lily eel, and we read the word obscurity, all these things, misery. These are for the lesser light, but you have to come back to the greater light, the light of life, ore. And then he gave them the entire summary so that he could know right from the fourth day's beginning, the sun and the moon, the lesser light and the greater light, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And he teaches several of the passages for us to learn the importance of this great life in Christ. Every time he comes up, he comes up to teach something great. Therefore, he calls happy, you are the blessed one, O Israel, who is like unto your people? Because he says, you are saved by the Lord. The word Yasha meant to say delivered. <laughs> Do you think you're really delivered? Our Lord our God said in John 8, 32, You shall know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. Are you delivered? We know very well you are not delivered. If you continue in my word, then only are my disciples are the Lord God. Do you know who, have the who will be the delivered ones? The slaves of the Lord God, the born slaves of my Christ. Because they will make the people to understand that the man of God, Anthropos, which they are looking in the sight of men. Aptonomai, we read that, to behold and to regard. Everyone should regard you that you are the children of God. Everyone should regard you that you have been delivered from the sicknesses of this world. And by that I meant to say not only your physical sickness, but every mannerism of worry, anxiety, fear. The sicknesses of the death which has delivered and given for us through Christ Jesus of the Lord of our God. Therefore, whosoever believes upon him shall never die, but have life everlasting in him. Have you been really delivered? Have you been the people of the delivered one, the redeemed one of Christ? You should have the new, the kinekatesis. You should be led breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And as much as people, you can deliver them or pull them out from the lake of fire, as Jude says, you have to be a man prepared unto the works of God. You should be a capable one having in your lions the strength wherewith you can reproduce the children needed. Therefore he claims for your lions to grid it with truth. But have you been delivered? You haven't delivered from your own clutches. You haven't been delivered from your own cobwebs. You haven't been delivered from your own mannerism of thinking which is absolutely evil to the core. The things what you think he said, I hate them. And that's what man is all the time. The thinking what you think, God the Father hates it. That is not good. We need to learn that word from the book of Isaiah chapter 64. Because these things are very, very important as many people think. The thinking is good in the sight of God. But the word of Lord God says for us over here. In Isaiah chapter 64. The thinking what you think, even that I hate. The reason why does he say so? Because your thinking is not like my thinking. Your ways are not like my ways. It is in Isaiah 65 too. He says for us, I have spread out my hands all the day unto rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good. And where do they walk? They walk after their own thoughts, their own devising natures, their own inventions, their own plans, their own schemes, called to be Maccabesh. So your thinking is not accepted in the sight of God. Since you are not thinking according to the word of Lord God, your thinking will not deliver you. 
But here he says, Happy are the people whom the Lord God delivers. And why the people will walk upright? Because they have been delivered from the Lord and in his presence. Even the angels cry out day and night, says in Isaiah 6. Holy one, holy one, holy one. And referring that time specifically to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when Isaiah writes those things, the doorposts in the temple gate, which have been firmly fixed by the Lord, which are inanimate things, they also tremble and shake when the name of my Lord God is been spoken, saying, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One, the same Lord God who was in our midst. And the people wanted to, wanted to take of him to say if there is any fault they can find upon him. And they tempt him to get the Caesar coin and they ask, is it worth for us to pay the tax? And he says there, particularly to those people who come, the publicans, he say, they ask, tempting him a question, Lord, whatever you speak, you know very well, you don't have respect towards the person, but you speak straightly because you're from God. They accept the divine fact, but they also love to tempt him saying that, do we pay the tax? And the point what we learn, the man who lived on this earth, we learn from that verses in Matthew, in Mark chapter 12. I think it has to be verse number 12 or 13. Because you need to know what is the character of my Christ and why he delivers us and how we need to walk in the deliverance of the Lord God. Always Christ, our Lord, our God, being our role model, being our ensample, not men. Even the same thing in 1 John 2, 6, we read, it is no longer you walk like Paul or Peter or XYZ. You walk like whom? You have to walk like Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God. So we find over here for us, in verse number 12 of Mark chapter 12, they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, because for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. And they sent unto him a certain Pharisees, and of the Herodians, that is called to be the standards of his time, when they were the people who are of king, 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 kingly authority over men, to catch him in his words. The word catch is agario, meant to say to hunt, and metaphorically to pursue eagerly so that they could find some fault in his preaching. And then he says, and when they were come, they say unto him, Master, listen to these words very carefully, the word master is called to be didaskalas, teacher. And then, teacher, we know we are acquainted that you are true and care for no man. The word true is nothing but Alatenias, which has been called for us. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And God the Father in heaven is seeking those men who, who worship him in truth. John 4, 23, that's the quote, Alatenias. And then, we know that you are true. And the word copulative conjunction, Kai, followed by the word called to be saying, you yourself, that is what master, you yourself are the true. And then he says, carest not, that is what having no caring about, in the sense concern about any man, that is the same thing what you and I as a pastor teacher should learn. When the king of England has been attending a church and the pastor teacher is preaching the word of God. This is one of the examples what we heard. And then the man from the other side who has been just just far away or a little bit far away from the preacher, he, he, he says that king is here so that he cannot have to show the things pertaining to the word of God as it is but show some partiality and hypocrisy. But the preacher pounding the pulpit, he said, king of kings is here. That means not representing the pastor teacher to be the king of kings, but he's saying, I represent God and his eternal word. I have no respect for the persons. Though you may be king, so what? We are here to answer back Lord God's word. We are here to regard Lord God's care. We are here to regard Lord God's pleasure, no matter what. The people will be so selfish on this earth, no matter what. They want to have to fulfill their pleasure, isn't it? We want to fulfill the pleasure and the goodwill of my God. So who are the obligations? If it is we our own self, let's kill it. Let, let's kill it off first. Put to death our own sin nature. Necrocytic, Colossians 3, 5. And are there any things that are hurdles for the pleasure of God? Let's go ahead to completely clear it out first. Let's put it to death. If there is anything that is against the will of God, let's cleanse it out first. There is no need for us to think that there is any hurdle that which is causing the pleasure of God not to be delighted in. 
So he says, King of Kings is here. The same thing, what God the Father sent his son so that we could learn walking in the footsteps of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because we have the sperm of Christ, he says in 1 John 3, 9, so that we need to walk like Christ. There is no excuse if you don't walk like Christ. And what the world thinks, the vigor, the valor, and the standards of the health, when they say, you are reaching the age of 40, you are reaching the age of 60, you are reaching the age of 80, so what? The first thing what we need to ask, what does the Bible teach? If they are the age of 85 like Caleb, he says he has the vigor of 40. Moses, his eyesight was not dimmed because he always looked upon Lord God. He never looked upon men. And his vigor and valor of his flesh, the freshness of his flesh was never abated. That is what is not decrease. So what the Bible teaches to us? We walk in the power of God. We don't walk according to the standards of men. Men thinks by the age of 40 it is such and such. Men thinks by the age of 60 it is such and such. Who cares? We are worried only about one thing. Before the heavenly glory of God the Father, the life is nothing. The only thing is we need to complete the work. What Lord God the Father has bestowed upon our shoulders as he led Moses, which could be done in loving days, which took 40 years, so that he could find out the men and we could, and could be led by the men. To cross and to reach Kadesh Barnea, it would be only loving days to reach the point. But God the Father took them 40 years so that he could know and learn from them. And those 40 years, the same thing what Moses was been kept over here to do many signs and wonders. In the same way what we have been kept, God the Father instantly, when we believe in Christ, he could take us back home. But why has kept us? So that we could renew and renovate and perform the deeds of God to be a witness against these people. So that tomorrow they shall not claim saying that if there would be a witness for us, we would have been believed. So you have to be the witness for them so that they can never raise their voice before the Lord. And witnessing everything, no partiality before man, no partiality before committee, no partiality before the doctrinal tenets and practices before the denominations. What the word of Lord God says that you have to preach. And this is a lesson taught by these Pharisees and the Herodians to the Lord when he says, Master, did us Colossus, we know you don't care for man. But today people care for money through that man which is going to give. And you regard not the person. The word regard is you don't listen, you don't have blapo because of this person towards this man called to be anthropos, face to face before the man. But you teach, that is what, the thing pertaining to Didasco, the way of God, the word way is Hodas, that is called to be the way which is we walk properly, which is of Theos. And how do you teach the way of God? You teach the way of God in truth. Again, the word Alatia. And how many of the people today really, they are preaching the word of God in truth, not by your Bibles, but by the translations, what you're thinking, but by the exegeomai standards. There are a lot of differences there between the things what you have in your translation and the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. If you are really been sent by the Lord, you will come back to teach the word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. But you haven't been really sent by the Lord. And what are you performing day by day? You're performing those things which is not in truth. So he says for us, but you teach the way of truth, the way of God in truth. So the three characters, the first thing, master, we know that you're true and care for no person. That is what you don't have any respect for person. Neither you regard or discern or have some hypocritical manner of partiality to be shown to the persons. But you teach the way of God in truth. <laughs> Today there is no Hodas, Thias, Didaske in Aletia or an Aletia. How is the way that you preach today? It does not match to the glory of God. Therefore they are not delivered out. The true deliverance comes when you teach the truth. Therefore he says in John 8.32, You shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. But you are not aware about the doctrine. You are walking in your own thoughts. You are walking in your own way of life. Which not match to the glory of God and you fail. And tomorrow you may try to claim before the Lord. Lord we would have heard these things there itself. But already it has been penned and kept for you in the Bible. You don't have the zeal. You don't love the Lord. You don't tremble at his word. 
when the word of Lord God has been communicated for you in the Hebrew and in the Greek, the same thing of the Hebrew being translated into Septuagint in AD 70, or sorry, in two in 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 in, two, in uh, the word called to be 70 BC, when it has been translated. You should have a zeal because nothing on this earth is more important than the document of Bible. The only thing which could change the entire world or which could protect the entire world or which could prosper the entire world. Not your nuclear weapons. Not your technology, not your advancement in this and that. It is not going to protect the environment. The earth or the heaven which is called to be the first solar space. The climatic conditions. Bible doctrine and his word alone, the greater you care, the greater you have love, the greater you find to fulfill the pleasure of the Lord, the greater you show favor unto the Lord God. The greater Lord God the Father will show you back the same care, favor, which is far greater, which you cannot even imagine or think. Do you lay down your soul for the word of God to be protected? But you haven't that love towards my Lord. Do you have that love? You know what for you come to the Lord? <laughs> in the time of this COVID-19 pandemic sicknesses, which is so great in this midst of this present date as well. You come for God for what? You come for the standards of making your life. You come for the standards to be protected. You love to make deal of a business with the Lord. Do you think that's a true way of repentance to the Lord? You will abhor your own flesh, dear brethren, tomorrow for not fulfilling the will of God in the fear of God. You know what happens exactly? The flesh is the one which always caters for the pleasure. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24-27, we read what Apostle Paul did because of the dispensation or the great work which has been given into his hands. He striveth for the mastery by making his own flesh in the standards of putting chastisement, he did not give pleasure to the flesh. But rather he used the flesh to the glory of God, to the proper work for which it has been due for every believer to understand that flesh. And furthermore, we read how he has used this flesh. He has used this flesh to the greater glory of Jehovah. In everything he says, not even to let go even the single facet of the cell of his flesh. In everything I would love to give to God the Father, and He did it. In nothing I withhold back, but everything I did to the Lord. And this flesh is the root cause for your every pleasure. Do you know what does it say? If you want to have some lust to be enjoyed, it caters. It directs you. That's what it happens when you're not born again, or if you're out of fellowship being born again in Christ. It caters you to sin, the lust of flesh, the lust of fire, and to prove the pride of life. It goes on to say, do this, do that, like the way we find a lesson in, in Solomon's life. The great man who experimented many things, and he writes in Ecclesiastes, everything is vanity under the sun, if you don't guard the commandments of Bible doctrine. And this is the fate of mankind given to us to control the word of God, or to make a great protection to the word of God, and to live a life that which is according to the word of God. So this man, he writes, what is this flesh? This flesh always caters for everything. And afterwards, this flesh alone turns back on you to say, Now, nah, you take the burden of the results of this flesh. First it says to enjoy. Later on, for example, drinking. You become drunkard. You destroy yourself. Fornication or adultery. Involving in a lot of sex. Later on, you destroy your own flesh. You know, in all these things, because people love to be in these angles, the flesh, lust. The flesh first is caters for the lust. Later on, it says, when your health has been deteriorating, it says you only bear it because you did it. Therefore, Paul writes for us in the book of Romans 7, nothing good in this flesh. There is nothing good. Therefore, when you know Christ through this flesh, you should be now as good as you don't know this Christ, you don't know this flesh again in Second Corinthians five fourteen and following. Because flesh is enmity to the spirit, and now you have to control your flesh through the spirit. 
Therefore, born again believers are already been said to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. No excuse if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and doing the will of God. That's how the flesh is all the time. The flesh fighteth against the spirit. The spirit fighteth against the flesh. They both fight. So what you have to be, you have to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to be controlled. So when you have been there in the spirit, and you learn the word of God, striving for the mastery, as 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and following teaches, then day by day you carry your cross. You know how hard it is for you? People love to spend five minutes in the temple. The remaining 23 hours, if needed, they love to spend in resort and they love to say, what a great place we had been, though it may cost you $100 per day, they're not worried. The reason why they're not worried. Because they say, time spent in resort is greater than the time what you spend in for prayer five minutes. But they do not understand the power which drives them is the prayer. The time being redeemed in Christ, it says, redeem the time, the days are evil. The word meant to say, literally purchase the time. How to purchase the time? Only in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. How we get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost? By using the privacy of your priesthood through rebound if you are a believer. If you are not a believer in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the first thing is not to get back into the fellowship. The first thing is to believe in Christ. If not, the wrath of Lord God abideth upon you. We haven't transformed. So he writes, happy are the people, the upright ones, the straightforward ones, the one who advance in the progress of walking straight with the word of God. These are the people. And what these people do? These are the blessed one of Jehovah. Because he has delivered them out. Having the word of Lord God is your deliverance. But having to show respect to men, having to show partiality towards the word of God is not deliverance. It is shackling yourselves in hypocrisy. And the whole Christendom lieth in such hypocrisy today, called to be the coat strength of the Lord God, not to represent the vigor of God, but to become chameleons in nature. The power of God which has been given for you is not to become chameleon in nature. It has called for you to become, to conform to the image of God. In order to become, to conform to the image of God, for which cause you have been predestined, he writes in Romans 8, you know what does the word say for us, dear brethren? For what cause you have been called to predestine to the Lord? To conform to his image. The image of his dear beloved son. Do you form that? Therefore, the nature from reptiles, the nature from snakes, the nature from fire of the heavens which are unclean, the nature which is wild beast and which is in accord to every Gentile believer, they have to transform now after believing in Christ. Because the same nature is also applying to the Jews. Because Jews also were compared to ox and ass indictment. Jews also were compared to the pigs and dogs. The same thing even with us as well. We are also like those reptiles, the snakes. But something is that they have been greater than us because they know something of the paths of God. But what are we knowing today? After given for us this great privilege of polytema one in the heaven of plero or standards we haven't even reached the state called to be entirety before the lord have you ever thought of the life that we are living does it match to the glory of god though we have been given greater privileges in the church age in the completed canon scriptures of the 66 books the fate right from the end being revealed for us the eternal state, what it would be, in the millennium, what it would be, in the seven years of tribulation, what it would be. This is a history textbook given for us in the book of Revolution from chapter 4 through 19, again 20 through 22, particularly chapter 20, millennium, 21 and 22, the futurity of the heaven, what we will be, where we will be. But the meantime, in Revelation 2 and 3, he gives the historical trends of the church age, and he compares us, overcome, ye who has in here, let him hear, overcome in the power of the Spirit, and do what is right in the sight of God. And he teaches for the seven churches, the number being perfection. He writes, the same trends are running around. Today we are like lukewarm. We are neither hot nor cold to the Lord. We are lukewarm in the standards of hypocritical life to the life of this earth. 
because you want to believe God only for the details of life as we read that in 1 Corinthians 14 20 we are the men of most pitiable miserable than unbelievers if you believe in Christ only for the sake of this life that meant to say what the life that you're living on this earth is the investment for the life which is going to come when you arise for resurrection either into the resurrection of life or resurrection of death and what are you doing you think you're giving great money to the church you think you're doing these great things to the church and you'll be blessed like this you'll be blessed like that you will have a seat in the heaven like that the life that you live if it doesn't qualify you to stand before the presence of lord god because much of the christendom is refining in moral standards which is no way concerned to the bible an unbeliever is going to go to hell is sometimes far greater and superior in morality than the believer is going to go to heaven why because a believer has believed in christ and he has to renovate he has to know the will of god not knowing the will of god not living according to the will of god they will be beaten with many strips says the word and yet we are not trembling at the word of god so he writes over here for us master we know can anyone make you to have that witness you don't have respect of persons you always teach the way of truth are you teaching the way of truth then you have to be an exegete then you have to go back to teach the word in isagogics categories and exegesis iota upon iota and kerara upon kerara are you teaching the word of lord god what the bible doctrine demands if you think you are teaching in your translations just forget it you are building up in something which is vain and vague those are just the footsteps those are just the mediating link of a bridge to move from this end to that end and you have to move from this end that is nothing but which you haven't known the mind of christ to that end to keep always your mind and focus upon the word of god and to look face to face in the lord you have to learn the standards of the word to be taught in hebrew greek and aramaic if not better don't preach therefore you have your lives for morality development but you're not having wise unto salvation but all scripture is given for you to become wise unto salvation and do you think you're something far be for better or for great in all of these things no way dear brother you are not if you don't go back for exegesis if you don't learn the word in isagogics if you don't learn the word in exegetical patterns with great categories of the word in dispensations the word dispensation is what being translated for many of the people to look as home administrator but now the trends have been changed in the dispensation why we call the dispensation of the grace dispensation of the holy ghost from the day of pentecost till the time of the rapture because it is purely by the ministry of lord god the holy ghost we could walk perfect as lord and savior jesus christ set forth for us a pattern to walk before him the way how we walked before lord god the father in heaven therefore we need to transform the standards of our thoughts you will not have deliverance if you don't have the thoughts being renovated according to the word of god there is no deliverance if you don't have the word of god to be number one priority so he says the thoughts of you i hate because these are not the thoughts what i intended coming back to the same book of isaiah chapter 65 he writes over here beginning with verse 11 but you are they that forsake the lord that forgot my holy mountain that prepare a table for the troop and that furnish the drink offering unto the number that is for fortune fate search therefore will i number you to the sword and to and though you may kneel down to the plagues yet because i called you did not answer when i spoke you did not hear but did evil before my eyes and did choose wherein i delighted not the same reprimandation over here he writes in isaiah chapter 66 for us to look the purpose of his word when particularly he says the one whom i regard nabath is the one who has the humbleness in his heart the one who is contrite in his spirit and we read the word humbleness is nothing but to be afflicted with great depression the people don't keep the word of god contrite in heart is nothing but they became lame dejected and the trembleth is nothing but careth who quickly shiver like an earthquake so he says he that killeth an ox if you don't tremble at his word and if you think you can give great offerings to the lord and if you think you have done great offerings to the lord god he says he that killeth an ox that is what you come to give a great sacrifice unto the lord it is as good as you have slave a man that means he doesn't have any pleasure in that a pleasure as he has when you tremble at his word and why we need to tremble at his word 
because we need to obey and maintain and guard it. And what did Adam do for the first time? He did not tremble at the word of the Lord. Therefore, for by one man sin entered into the world, and death resulted. But by another man obedience, it gave life to many, the life of eternal one. The obedience leadeth unto life, the disobedience leadeth unto death. So here he says, He that killeth an ox is like a man who has been slaved. He that sacrificeth a lamb is of as good a cutting a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation, it is like a swine's blood. He that burneth incense, it is like because he has been bowing down or kneeling down to an idol. And that's called blessings of lawlessness. Besides that, they have chosen their own ways, again their thoughts being their own, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Where did the soul delight? In that which is disgusting to me. Therefore he writes, I will also choose their delusions. The word called to be, I have chosen those who are unweaned, that is, they have not grown up, and up to what extent they have been unweaned, I cause shrinking in them, and I shall bring them to the place called to be, when I called, they did not respond, when I spoke, they did not listen, they did evil in my eyes, and which not I take delight, they have chosen. So he writes these things so, so that you could understand the unweaned ones, the people who haven't grown up, the people who haven't learned the word of God. It doesn't refer to the unbelievers, but you have to learn this. It refers to the people who haven't learned to understand to be grown up. The word very specific, which has been used, unweaned. I will choose their delusions, he says in the English, but in the Hebrew he says, Moreover, I, I shall choose in once unwind of them. The word unwind is the people who haven't been trained in the word of God. So you have over here for us in Isaiah chapter 66, or in Isaiah chapter 66 in verse number 4 itself, we find this word which is essential. The word unwind, where do we find? He says, I will choose. The word choose is called to be bakar, which meant to say elect for delusions. Their delusions is nothing but their vexation or one attendance, which is like a babe or the people who haven't been taught in the word of God. So the word, why do we use unwind? Unwind are the people who haven't grown up. Can you marry a babe? Or will you marry a, ma a woman who is, who is mature enough according to your age? So the God, Lord God doesn't want those people who are still babes. So he says, I have chosen their delusions. That is what the unwind children who haven't grown up to the word of God. And then he says, I will bring their fears upon them. The word bring is nothing but bow to enter in. And what is the fear? The word fear is called as megura. That is, I will get terrors. If you don't tremble the terror before the Lord God and his word and to honor his word above his name, then the time will come when he gets terrors in your life called to be fear, magor, and the word meant to say sojourning place wherever you reside, it will be for your lifetime terrors. Magor or Maguram. <laughs> the word terrors, why you have it till your lifetime. People today, either death or life, that's what they're choosing. If they don't get the vaccine, if they don't get the instant solution for them for to breathe into their lungs, the oxygen pneuma, you know, it's like a lifetime of terror. Therefore, they wear the masks. So he says, I will get them upon them that which is fear, but the word is not fear, but called to be Megura, meant to say, till the lifetime of them, I will make them to be terrors. You know why you have that terrors? Why you don't have that palpitation in your heart to get free of these terrors? Whenever you don't do the work of God, whenever you don't give your time to the Lord God, every day the tithe of your time, you should have the terror in your heart. And it may seem for you to be foolish to say, if you don't serve the Lord, Lord God the Father will have anger upon you and he's going to take revenge. That it may seem to you foolish. But that's the fact. You don't quake or tremble at the word of God to become disciple. He's going to provide you terrors. 
till your lifetime, till your dwelling place. The word meant to say wherever you sojourn. It is like a terror. It is not this COVID which has not been visible to the eyes, but like the same manner, it's a terror. And why does God the Father shrink in you such terrors? Why does he give you that shrinking fear or megura? The reason of the judgment, he says, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes. God the Father is regarding those men who tremble at his word. He writes, Kerat. In Isaiah 66, 2 and 66, 4, he says, When I called, why I put in them lifetime, this pilgrimage trip, sojourning place, dwelling place, why they have the terror as the people now they are fearing and worrying about their lives. Because they rely upon the strength of men. They rely upon their thoughts. They forgot the true living God. The hearts of these men who serve the idols, they are like having the same nature of idols. If we have the heart and serving nature to a true living Lord God, we have to be the people who are set high most to serve the Lord God in spirit and in truth. And we have to be the people living to God in holiness. For them it is terror, but for us it is life. That's what he says over here again, if we could go back to Isaiah 65. The difference between his servants and the people who are not his servants. He claims in verse 13, Therefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hunger. Behold, my servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall have howl and vexation of spirit. Why? Because they do not have the terror. If they had the terror of the word of Lord God, if they would tremble at the word of Lord God, they wouldn't have had this shrieking or shrinking fears to their lifetime. Because he says the judgment, the reason, when I called, you did not answer. When I spake, you did not hear. But rather, you went to do evil before my eyes, and you did that which I delight not. But you choose to do that. That means constantly, out of hundred times, you do ninety-nine times which God the Father doesn't choose or doesn't have to be delighted in. Therefore, he writes again in verse 5, Hear you the word of the Lord God, you that tremble at his word. And he shows forth for us what will be our life. The same life what he promised in the millennium. The same life what is going to be forever. He says now you can enjoy that life right now in these heavenly standards. Right now through the church. But you have to tremble. You have to be the recipients of his word. You have to have that shrieking, shrieking fear in you. And if you are the man of God called and given to you the word of God, by that we meant to say the people should look at you as Christ. So that Christ could be formed in you. I take the birth pangs of a labor, said Apostle Paul. If every believer has been given to the standards to be called as a man of God, there would be something far greater than Moses. As man of God he was, he turned to become the standards of Ish, called to be in the word. After the image of God, according to his, his, his way of thinking, accurate Ish, we read that word, immediately they turned to become another man. If you have the spirit of God, that's the power. But you are not cleaving unto the Lord God with all of your purpose. You are not having any purpose in your heart to serve the Lord. And what are you doing day by day? You are deteriorating your thinking. You are choosing that which God the Father do not delight. You are doing evil in the sight of God. Thus you will have the shrinking fear in you in your pilgrimage trip. In the entire course of your life. And yet, those who tremble at his word, he says, Hear the word of the Lord God. This is the mandate of the Lord God. You that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out of my namesake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. 
that's enough for us. Rejoicing, we shall have a great pleasure, but they shall be ashamed. Have you ever thought of this? We shall have a great joy, but they shall be ashamed. Who tremble at the word of God, they will not be ashamed of their flesh. They knew the purpose of this flesh. In this flesh, they will strive for the master, as Apostle Paul set forth. In this flesh, they will witness the truth because it is the power of the Spirit. In this flesh, they will have complete deliverance from the worldly lusts. That is as good as death to the world. Though you are alive in the flesh yet again. You don't have the lust of flesh, the lust of eye and the pride of life in this flesh. And such men God the Father who worship Him in spirit and in biblical truth, He seeks. But what are we doing, dear brethren? Is the life that we are living is really worth in the presence of God? The life that we are enjoying is really worth in the sight of God. And why will you suffer? Why will you have shrinking fears? Why will you have terrors? Why will you have Megura? Till the lifetime you breathe. Every corner of your dwelling place, every corner of your resting place, every corner of your journeying on this earth, called to be pilgrimages. Why do you want to have that fear and terror rather than trembling at the word of Lord God at every moment given to you? Like the way of Joseph said, how could I sin against the Lord? Though he did not have the Bible that time to know, but we have the Bible now, yet we grieve, squelch, wax, lie, and resist Lord God, the Holy Ghost in us. And you don't make disciples, though the Bible calls you to make disciples. You have respected towards the denominations. You have respected towards the men so that you could not teach the ways of the Lord God as per it is in truth. Therefore, you do not go for exegesis. You enjoy now. You will pay now the shrinking fears in your soul. You haven't really tested the power of L. What God wants, He alone does it. And the power of God renovates and regenerates. He could make even the rattling of the bones to get back in Ezekiel 37. That's the power of his word when he breathes in his nostrils the breath of lives. Far less the dry tree of the fig one could get back to life when he said, have faith in God. He could arrange a vast army when he said, in the valley of the dead bones. Such a great Lord God we have for us as our defense. He is our mediator. He is our redeemer. The salvation of great mankind is appeared unto all. That meant to say what? You can live a life of Zoe, not having anything to claim in Satan or to give a path to sin so that you could be easily beset off, he said in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. So that throw away everything that which is making you to not to look unto Christ. And confirm to the image of Lord God, becoming his servants to tremble at his word. How many days more you want to choose those things which is not in accord with the word of God? What life you live, just go back and look, your life is dry. It is like the wilderness. No joy, no pleasure. Because you are not having peace with God, you don't tremble in the presence of God. You are not making the things straight with God first to walk to be delivered from the word of God every day. Therefore you become subjected slaves. And you don't even have a thought to regard other man who is with you, his thoughts, and to have respect and privacy for him. Far less you have respect and privacy to the thoughts of God the Father and fulfill the great pleasure of life. You have been created for God. You have been made to fulfill the pleasure of God, not your own pleasure on this earth. When you have your pleasures on this earth, you die sin unto death. We will die one or the other day. But you have to die to live again in Christ so that you shall not be ashamed when you have entrance into the presence of God the Father but you have done the will of God the Father to the highest. As he said in Luke 17, 7 through 10 the passage we are unprofitable slaves O Lord which is our duty to be done we have done it. 
and not to be ashamed when you stand in his presence, your entrance could be abundance. He writes in Second Peter 1, 3 through 13. Because you are not you are not blind, but you have looked far off. You are not barren because you know the will of God through the word of God. And what, what are you doing, dear brethren, in the church age? Foolishly spending your time for your pleasures. Not even having a regard that you have been given the indwelling and free ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost in this church age, your body being the temple of the living Lord of a God. Are you aware? aware? You shall not grieve, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. You shall not sculpt, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. You shall not sin against your own flesh, you know, because God, the Holy Ghost, involves in your flesh. You have been purchased with a great price. You do not have authority over your own flesh, but you still go to fulfill the pleasure of your lusts. Rather than making your knees to bow down before the presence of Lord God and do those great signs and wonders what God the Father hasn't been received till date. To become a scribe by kneeling down and writing the word of God. But for the details of life you love to enjoy. Don't worry, you have pleasure not to tremble at the word of God. And you will have the shrinking fears introduced because you're still unweaned babies. You have to grow up. As Apostle Paul said, I came to give you strong doctrine, strong meat, but you're still babes. I could talk to you only the things which pertain to babes. Therefore, he writes in the mystery epistles of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and the book of Philemon to teach us the importance of this mystery doctrine to make every believer perfect and complete according to the standards of the glory of God. It is not the power, it is not the flesh, the power in us, but it is the spiritual power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, operating and working in us. And all glory to God the Father, he writes. So that everyone should have the same thinking of Christ. And what a stupid life you have pleasure on this earth. What I will do with the lust when it has been pumping you out in your adrenaline or testosterone or restosterone? What will you do with that? How many minutes you can have the pleasure? But the pleasure, if you fulfill God the Father by obeying all the things of his word, for example, what Adam did when he looked upon that woman when she ate the fruit, he would have resisted that pleasure rather than going and to copulate with her. The sin wouldn't have passed on upon every man. He would have resisted that pleasure by doing the will of God, obeying the word of God when the test was being kept for him in the Garden of Eden. Even the same thing when you resist the pleasure of your flesh and be obeying all the will of God the Father, the rewards will be eternal forever. They stand forever as a monument. They stand forever as a witness. They stand forever as a great, great legendary impact being left behind on this earth. And it will be as good as we crush Satan, trample Satan under our feet and as good as slippering Satan because Satan cannot resist the truth and it couldn't stand for the glory of the word of truth. It had pride in it. And we are proving when we obey the word of Lord God, we could be greater for Lord God on this earth. Only having the pleasure of God the Father to be fulfilled is our life why we breathe. Apart from any other pleasure, you may say this is something like anarchy, isn't it? We rule by having to put upon you the standards of only one vital role. But now, it's not anarchy nor tyranny. It's the fact. We are born slaves of Lord God the Father. He's our master. What he demands, what he wants to be done through our life, we shall execute it no matter it may cost our life. And if we don't fulfill that, you know you knew the shrinking fears already operating in your soul. The shrinking fears for the fears of this life, for the worries of this life, what to eat, what to drink, the shrinking fears about your health, the shrinking fears about the things pertaining to your family, the shrinking fears about every details of life. But those who do the pleasure of God the Father, they are set free from the shrinking fears because Lord God the Father knows to provide them the best. In every transitory of his life, we read that in Psalms 91.1. Because eternal God is our refuge. We rest under him and we lord in the power of him.
to fulfill every details of this life. He leads us. That's the power of God. <laughs> And in order to enjoy that power of God, you have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And in order to enjoy the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath, you need to make sure you're in it. And Lord God, the Holy Spirit doesn't operate in you until unless you take in the word of God. And which word? Exegetical word. Seek the man who teach the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. As long as you think you are really doing the will of God, you are like unweaned babies and unweaned babies will have the shrinking fears in their souls. Their souls will melt off. And yet, dear brethren, if you don't become the servant of the Lord and if you don't tremble at His word, you will fear for your life. And people are much worrying to fear for their life, finding out their life to be number one to be saved and to do this, to do that. But since you love to live a life which could only fulfill the great pleasure of God the Father, then you will have a real meaning in this life. Till the time, forget it. Those who tremble at his word, he writes in Isaiah 66, 5, is giving a discourse of entire life now ahead. And the people who think why they came in the flesh, it's a great repulsion. It's a great abhorrence that they haven't used the flesh to the glory of God. Apostle Paul says in Galatians 6, 17 and 18, Don't disturb me because I bear in my body the marks of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can you show what are the marks of you? Do you have anything of the marks in your flesh towards Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's work? If you kneel down, you will have upon your knees the marks. Do you have those marks? And what marks do you have upon your flesh? Do you think you will put a tattoo which is not allowed from the Bible? The marks that we have been purchased by the Lord shows that we are humbly obedient not for our pleasure but to fulfill the rats and approval of the Lord God because we are His ministers, He says in Psalms 103.21 and we are here to regard we are here to regard the pleasure of Lord God to be number one priority. We are here to regard the love of Lord God to be number one priority. John 15, 14 and John 21, 15 through 18. And we are here to have favor from the Lord to care his word forever. And yet how many days more, dear brethren, living a life that which is not in accord with the word of truth. How many days more? Don't you feel it is burden upon your flesh? You don't want to wash your soil. Don't want to wash your dirt. Don't you want to wear the new clothes? Don't you want to appear before the Lord? You want to die forever and forever, as he writes in the same verse of Isaiah 66, 24, worm do not die, fire cannot be quenched. Do you want to be in that place? And you want to be the person to abhor your own flesh. What did I do with my flesh in, the, in this earth? Was I really fearing and trembling to the word of God? Was I really bond slave unto my Lord. Think over these issues. It's your life. It's your pleasure. And which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide because it's your volition. And which way you want to go, you think over it. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory and His grace to learn the importance of this flesh on this earth. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care to Sothon Lagan. 
herald the word in season and out of season because the diamatrum witnesses where with you have been called the number one diamatrum witnesses in welling trinity followed by babylon in our hands and number two diamatrum witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brother not worry besides nature the entire angelic host will be witnesses and what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter how the chips may fall so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue every breath of our life to do the good pleasure of god the father for this cause which has given the flesh and nothing else in this earth think about these issues we shall come back and continue tomorrow infinitely divine holy father what a great privilege it is a lot to understand through the word how eternal is the word o lord how true it is how powerful it is not to enjoy the lusts of this flesh in this pleasure to be done and grieve and squelch and wax and lie and rejoice, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which is dwelling in us, to produce in us the character of Christ every breath, conform to the image of his glory, to pay the eternal glory of God the Father, the vast words which is word before you, so that, Lord, from this breath on what we take, let our flesh be used only for fulfilling your pleasures. Let us regard your love, which you have given for us in a great commission in fulfilling thy word, to make disciples of all the nations, and whatsoever you mandated us to fulfill it, then only we are your philosophers, friends, you said. Help us, O Lord, to have these things in this flesh to regard your pleasure as number one priority, your love as number one priority, and in the favor of your grace which you have bestowed upon us, till the dying grace besides living grace, saving grace, super grace, ultra super grace. Help us, O Lord to care for your word in each and every breath we take. More than the necessary food we take, more than the breath we take, more than the water we drink. Only your word to be our life, so that, that we could enjoy in this flesh. We are thankful for this great privilege, O oh Lord, for your enlightenment in this word. We pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost will enlighten and challenge for many people to come in this word to learn and to give you glory, to be your servants, and regard thy word to be trembled at every breath in our life. Do section Father, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.